Hey everybody, my name is Cameron or Rook, and I wanted to make this video because I've been selling on TCG Player since the beginning of this year. Um, I think that at the time of this video, I am approaching 3,000 sales, 100% feedback, level four seller involved in the direct program. And I just wanted to take some time to share some of the feedback and, uh, and some of the tips that I've learned if you're a new seller trying to start out. I've been collecting cards from Magic, Pokemon, Digimon, and Yu-Gi-Oh, of course, um, since, I don't know, 2005. So I've had like, I think I have like 13,000 cards listed on TCG Player at this point. And with all this time of pulling orders, fulfilling, packing them in envelopes, sending them out in the mail, all of the process for selling on TCG Player, I put together eight tips. Is eight a lot? I feel like it would have been cleaner if it was five, but I have eight tips that I settled on for new TCG player sellers on what to avoid some of the traps that I fell into early. So here are my eight tips for new TCG player sellers. Number one is know your card, know what you have in your hand. Okay. Is it a first edition versus unlimited for Yu-Gi-Oh? Is it a pre-release or a promo pack card? Is it a hollow or reverse hollow for Pokemon? You got to know what kind of card it is. There have been so many situations where I listed, you know, maybe I'm in the zone, I'm just like mass listing Yu-Gi-Oh! And I realized that, you know, my Magic Ruler set, I have half unlimited and half first edition, and so I'm like not paying enough attention, I'm mislisting them. Or when I was first starting out, I didn't realize hollow versus reverse hollow for Pokemon, I didn't really know what that meant. I thought it was hollow, it wasn't. You know, time comes when someone buys the card, and I realize that I this isn't the correct printing set rarity that they want. Um, so just to avoid those situations, do a little bit of research on what you have and make sure that it's the correct thing. It really doesn't get more complicated than like Hollow Reverse Hollow and like First Edition Unlimited. Um, and that's with the products that I deal with, which is Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Digimon, Magic, primarily. Some WoW TCG, you know, some like Monsuno and like Harry Potter card game, a little bit of old stuff, but really nothing else that's crazy. Tip number two, when in doubt, mark it as lightly played. I don't follow this rule more than I should. Um, I'll go through a whole stack of cards and list them all as near mint. I missed a slight peel on one of the cards or, you know, you flip it over on the back and there's a clear scuff that's going to make it lightly played. If you find yourself squinting at a card and trying to be like, well, can I get away with listening as near mint? Because it'll give me like 10 cents more, you know, just list it as lightly played. There are a lot of, um, like card stores that I know that just across the board list their stuff as lightly played because they don't want to deal with the BS of somebody being like, Hey, you sold this to me as near mint, but it's not near mint. And you got to deal with that. So when in doubt, lightly played or even go further. Okay. There are cards that I've had where I'm listing them as heavily played. And there are cards that I've had that I've sent to the direct program that I've listed as moderately played. And they've actually sent it back saying, no, actually this is heavily played and here's why. So if you're involved in the TCG player direct program, they'll send you your cards back that they don't think fit the condition quality that you listed them as with detailed feedback as to why I had, for example, on a card that I think I listed as lightly played. It was a, it was a magic card. There was a small water stain on the card that I did not realize was there. I sent it to the direct program. They sent it back and say, actually, because of this water damage, it's actually a damaged card, even though the rest of the card looked completely fine. So there are things like that. You're not going to know right away. And that's fine. It's fine to make the mistakes, but just when in doubt, mark it one condition lower than normal. You might find yourself in a situation where you have a card that's worth, I don't know, $10 or more. And there's a huge drop off. A lot of cards, when you're dealing with like the, you know, under a dollar, you're going to see that like near mints, 30 cents, lightly played 27 cents. And it's like, does it really matter at that point? Unless somebody, you know, people are looking for near mint more, but you might have a card that's valued at $10, but the lightly played all of a sudden drops to six. And so now you're having an argument with yourself in your head, like, well, can I get away with listening as near mint? And as soon as you say in your head, get away with, that's a clear indicator that you should list one down. So definitely to avoid some stuff. And, and negative feedback that people might have. Uh, like I said, I have 100% positive feedback. The instances that I had where someone has questioned the condition that I've listed and sold them to, um, I've just given them a full refund, tell them they can keep the card. I don't try and, and negotiate or do any of this crap. So it happens pretty rarely, um, especially if you follow this rule to list down, if you think that it's uh, kind of toe in the line of near mint. Tip number three, recommended low price personally, in my personal experience, I don't want to sell a card for any less than 25 cents. The reason is, is because there will be people that will buy one card and it's 25 cents. You get the 99 cent shipping on top of that. TCG player takes the cut between the stamp, the envelope, the top loader, the penny sleeve. You're netting about, oh gosh, I did the math. 
earlier. I think that that total is it's like 79 cents or something like that. So you're going to net something like six cents on a 25 cent card. If you're looking at that like microscopic of a level of someone's buying single cards. Now there is an advantage to the listing cards for lower. A lot of magic cards that are commons are going to trend for somewhere between five and 10 cents. If you list your cards for five, 10 cents, sure. There's going to be somebody that's going to buy a bunch of them. And then it makes, it makes financial sense because you're putting them all in the same package. Or if you're involved in the direct program, it makes sense because that's also just one package you're sending to TCG players. So more opportunity to sell if you have that lower price, but too often in my personal experience, am I seeing that I'm going to have people that are just going to buy the one card and I'm, if I'm selling a card at five cents and they just buy one five cent card, I'm taking like a 20 cent loss to send that to them. So 25 cents is typically where I go to. I've also tried listing cards as low as five cents, but then having the shipping be a buck 29, but that doesn't work out as well. It's, it's fine for people that want to sell heavily and direct, but it, it hurts people that want to do individual sales to, to shoppers on TCG player. So I found that the, the, the good low for me is 25 cents. Tip number four, and there have been people that have said this before, don't underestimate the value of any card that you receive as part of Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Magic. A perfect example that blew me away. I should have thought about it. If you ever go to Friday Night Magic and people are pulling cards, it's a pre-release event. It's like a, uh, a sealed event, right, where we're drafting or it's a pre-release kit or something like that. Um, you notice how you see tokens just strewn all over the table at the end of the night and people are just like, whatever. Um, but they're taking home their chaff, right? They're taking home commons and commons. They leave tokens. Tokens is a perfect example of a card that absolutely has value on TCG player more so than most commons. Okay. You'll get like, I think I, I got a golem from lost caverns of Ixalan that's worth 25 cents. And then all the commons are worth five cents, you know? So tokens are definitely one of them. Also a lot of lands, um, especially in the newer sets, you know, with the art style, the way that they look. Uh, they can be pretty, uh, they can be, you know, upwards of 30 cents, which is pretty substantial when you're looking at kind of the, the median of magic cards between commons and commons being like five, 10 cents. So don't underestimate the value of cards, even like the little cards you get in Pokemon that give you like the free pack on the online game, shut up teams on the online game are worth like something and they will sell 100%. So don't underestimate the value of every card, even this. This is from Lost Cameras of Ixalan. This is like the stupid little card where you put like your flip notes on. This is worth something. Just make sure that you understand kind of the number and, and what you have. That kind of goes back into rule one where, uh, you know, maybe I have an island, but it's island number 15 when there's, you know, three variations of island in that set. So you got to make sure you know what you have. But every card, don't underestimate the value of the card. Tip number five. Typically when I'm throwing something in an envelope, I usually don't add tracking to anything under $20 when I'm throwing something in an envelope and putting a stamp on it. I found that the limit before the post office starts to yell at you and gets mad at you is about 20 cards before they consider it to be a parcel and it needs to be, you're paying $5 to, to add tracking to it. This is the kind of envelope that I use. Okay. Not as long as like a traditional one. It's got like the easy peel on the back. I found that really just about 20 cards in a single stack with a top loader, that's going to get through the post office. No problem. Anything higher than that, you might want to look at packaging it as a large envelope, which if it's bendable enough, that's going to run you like two bucks or something like that. Otherwise, it's going to be a parcel in the United States where the cheapest shipping, you're going to have to have tracking. It's going to be five bucks, five, ten, five thirty, something like that. So when you're selling, um, you know, if you see an order that's like they bought 30 cards, there's a good chance that if you try and put it in the post office with a stamp on it, they're going to send it back. Um, this also kind of ties into the tip about my recommended low being 25 cents. Because that math works out where 20, 25 cent cards is, uh, was that five bucks? So even if you do get hit with the post office saying this is enough, you're like kind of, you're not breaking even because you're still losing the cards, but you're not taking as big of a loss as you could. So that also kind of ties into the recommended low price of cards. If someone's going to like buy a crap time, because people will always try and like just tow the line. So they get that free shipping. If you offer the free shipping over $5 um, and you just want to make sure that it still makes financial sense for you because $5 worth of cards can be a lot of cards and you want to make sure they actually have value from that. Tip number six, get some sort of automation for your labeling for your envelopes. I personally have a uh, return address stamp. That's so great. And it was like $15. I bought that at the very beginning and oh my God, I didn't know what I would do without it. My handwriting is terrible. I hate writing. I do still hand address my envelopes, which is a, a nightmare. As you could tell, a lot of people use label makers. I'm in the market to get one because I've started seeing more traffic on my stuff. So I would absolutely recommend that if you're going to 
sell on TCG Player for real. It's not like the three cards you have, you're going to have thousands of cards in inventory. Please get an automation, some form of automation for your labeling with the addresses, and then just a return address stamp is perfect. Tip number seven, and this one is going to be geared more towards the individual seller. So like I do this alone, you know, I have a pile of all my cards, my thousands of cards. I address the envelopes, I fulfill the orders, and I put them in the mail. So, you know, if you're, you'll notice that when you buy Magic Singles from like a store that's kind of right there at the front on TCG Player, and they've been doing this forever, and it's like maybe it's a brick and mortar local game store, you'll notice every time you get your card list, it's going to have, or every time you get your cards in the mail, it's going to have the card list. They printed it out and folded it and put it in there for you. I don't, people might not like this tip. This is from my personal experience. Like I said, 100% feedback on almost 3,000 orders. I never print the card list. Um, printing the card list is an extra piece of paper that can put an envelope into parcel territory. And I have never, not once, received feedback like, well, I got my order, but where the heck's the card list? Even on orders where it was like 20 cards, you know, it's a lot to keep track of. You know, I've never received negative feedback for that. So I'm just saying as an individual seller, this might work for you. Maybe you guys don't even have a printer. You don't necessarily need to print out the card list each time you ship an order. So, and my last tip, uh, this is also something that a lot of people are going to tell you, be ready for loss. There's going to be people that say they didn't get the envelope, especially since I'm not tracking under $20. There's going to be people, I've had people that say, well, I got the envelope, but I opened it and there was nothing in it, which I, I may have overstuffed the envelope and maybe it, it, something happened to it. I don't know. Um, you're going to get some loss. You can't let it eat at you. It's really not as much as people might say in my personal experience. Okay. So I'd like maybe once every three weeks, I get a message that says, Hey, I never got this or, you know, somebody, I didn't put an address number. So it's going to, or I get something returned to me because it couldn't forward to an address. It didn't hit. And then I reach out to the person It happens like once every three weeks. And it usually ends up in me refunding the person because I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the seller. That's like, well, wait another week and see if it comes, you know, I'll just be, if they reach out to me and say, you know, Hey, I didn't get this yet. And usually the reaching out's been like three weeks. Um, I'll say, yeah, I'm sorry for that. You know, I'm just going to give you a full refund. And like the order's like $4. So it's not worth losing sleep over. Um, some people are going to realize, hey, they guess, this guy didn't track this. I can just say that it didn't show up. And people are going to do that. But it doesn't happen as often. I did a lot of eBay selling also. And it happens much more often than eBay. But TCG Player, people are usually pretty good. Like I said, it's like once every three weeks I get something that's really not a big deal. But just be ready for that. You're going to see some minor loss with that. It's just the nature of the business. Don't let it get to you. Okay, thanks for letting me talk about TCG Player. I've spent a lot of my time doing this, um, especially the listing. Once the listing's done, it gets easy. But fulfilling the orders, it's kind of like a, a daily, every other day thing. And I realize I've been doing it long enough, and I've filled enough orders that I had some things to say. So hopefully you guys found this useful for those of you that are looking to start on TCG Player. Or if there are people that kind of just started, you just hit that level four, and you're just looking for more content on selling on TCG Player. Um, let me know if you'd like to see more stuff like this. This is my first video around TCG player and selling. This channel has done a lot of TCG in general, but I really only started selling on TCG player this year. So if this is something you'd like to continuously see, let me know. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you later.